घूस बम सी टू थाउजेंड द हॉन्टेड कार रिटर्न बाय आर एस टाइम चैप्टर एट अ गर्ल शी हैड अ वेवी बॉन्ड हेयर दैट कॉट द लाइट फ्रॉम द स्टीट लैम्प डार्क कैट लाइक आईज शी स्टेयर इन एट मी एज इफ आई वर अ मार्टिन पुल द डोर आई इंस्ट्रक्टेड मोशनिंग साइंटिकली टू आउटसाइड हैंडल इट स्टक She noted and grabbed the handle. The car door swung open. She took a step back as I leaped out of the car, breathing hard. "Are you okay?" she asked. She had a low, whispery voice. "What were you doing in there?" The 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 lock was stuck. I stammered. I brushed a strand of hair from one eye of me and studied her. She wore a blue down vest. Open over a dark V-neck sweater, her straight leg jeans were torn at one knee. When she brushed back the shoulder length hair, I saw that she had three different earrings dangling from each ear. It's a new car, I explained. I mean, we just bought in this morning. She nodded. A smile spread over his face, repelling a dimple in a cheek. She really a great looking. I decided she looks like a model or a TV star. You were trying it out? She asked in that soft purring voice. I nodded. Yeah, I like cars. She rested her hand on the fender. Her nails were shiny blue and she had two or three rings on each finger. I saw you were having trouble. She said it's a good thing. I came by her For sure, I agreed. Thanks. And then I added, "Who are you?" For some reason, my question made her laugh. My name is Marissa Madeline. She announced. She told her name, "My." This is my new neighborhood. She said, sliding her hand back and forth over the car fender as if she petting it. I was talking a walk, you know, checking it out. You just moved here. I asked stupid question. She already told me it was a new neighborhood. Which house? She pointed with head toward the old flanker house just past the corner. That old dump. I thought no one has lived in this house for years. Are you going to Forest Valley Middle School in town? I asked. Probably. She replied. making a sore face i don't know yet i hate transferring to new school after the year has already started where did you live before ask someone else she replied and giggled no really i hesitate did you move i stopped and uttered i started as someone bumped from me i spun around todd He grinned up at me. What are you doing out here? I demanded. What are you doing out here? He mimicked. You sneaked out, didn't you, Mitchell, to sit in the car? I am not telling. I am telling right now. No, wait! I cried. I am telling unless I can sit in the driver's seat for a while. Todd declared. He made a move toward the car and back pulled him back. No way. I told him stay away from the new car you will get us both in a major trouble then i am telling he wimed he held him by the skinny shoulders listen to me todd you can't sit in the car you, the car doors are sticking they liar he cried no really i hesitated i was locked in if marisa haven't opened the door i would have been locked inside all night who Todd demanded Marisa I told him I wheeled around Marisa she had managed Todd gave a hard chuckle liar he ground she quit I cried raising a finger to my lips I glanced toward the doorway we are supposed to be inside we don't want mom and dad to catch us out here Todd crossed his arms over a front of his fake leather bomber jacket when do I sit in the car tomorrow i promise i whispered now come on i took his hands and led in the front stoop i pushed open the front door and cautiously peered inside no sign of mom and dad i could hear voices on the tv from the den hurry i whispered i crept inside and carefully closed the door behind us i motioned to the stairs across the wall 
we were almost there when i heard the loud cry from the back hall where i rushed forward in the time saw a blinding flash of white light and an airy figure inside the light staggering toward us trembling arms raised high that's it torbit that's the ghost